have that voice. You know who it is the minute you hear it. And the world is mourning right now the legendary Aretha Franklin. The Queen of Soul lost a battle to cancer just this morning. She was surrounded by her friends and her family while she was at her Detroit home. Entertainment reporter uh, John Murray had the opportunity to meet her. He's live with us now via Skype. John, thank you so much uh, for taking some time for us today. What stuck with you about Aretha after meeting her face to face? Uh, well, when I met Aretha, it was uh, June of 2010. It was at the Apollo Gala in Harlem. And uh, I had done six years on the nationally syndicated Tom Jordan Morning Show. And Aretha was a big fan of the show. She actually was best friends with Tom Jordan's ex-wife, fitness guru, Donna Richardson Joyner. And when I met her, I was surprised she knew who I was. Uh, she also <laughs> was a big fan of cable news, and I was always on HLN and CNN at the time. And uh, we had a nice moment. Uh, uh, her publicist, my friend Gwendolyn Quinn, took this real blurry photo of the two of us. I always said I wanted a more crisp. Uh, and sharp photo, but it was just, uh, uh, listen, I was amongst royalty, and it was my pleasure that she even graced me with her presence. So what was it about her, you think, that will, will stay with you? Because you got a, an opportunity to get to know her in a way that most of us never will. You know what it is? The music will always live on. While we'll never hear Aretha Franklin sing live again, uh, she has a catalog and a legacy that defies genres and that will last the test of time. See, we call her the queen of soul, but at her core, she was just Reverend, Reverend C.L. Franklin's daughter. She was a church girl, a preacher's kid. So for every time she sang R&B or soul, pop, or even classical, when she sang My Country, Tis of Thee at President Barack Obama's inauguration, she took every song to church. She would put her Aretha stank on it. And she loved church so much that in between touring uh, the country, and she did that on a on a tour bus and not an airplane because she didn't fly often, but she would go back to Detroit and almost once a year host her own revival where she would pick her own preachers and singers to come in and, and would have church. And, you know, I don't care what stage you saw her at, whether it was the Kennedy Center or the Essence Festival or in front of dignitaries. There's a, a PBS special that she did at the White House. Aretha would always get full of God's spirit she would do what they call the holy dance on stage. She would hawk her dress up and shout across the stage. And very often in the memory of her father, she would bring some of her favorite preaching singers out like Bishop Paul S. Morton or Melvin Williams from the Williams Brothers to come out and do duets with her on songs like Precious Memory. So she always honored her roots no matter her platform. Mm, she knew who she was and she was not afraid to be just that. John Murray, thank you for sharing with us today. My pleasure.